Hello and welcome to a special interview sponsored by Glendivit Books. News that a new and very worrying variant of COVID-19 has been discovered in South Africa has, to be honest, terrified the world. Newspaper reports suggest it could be more transmissible even than Delta. The same reports suggest it might even be more immune escape. And that raises the question, what exactly do we know about it? How truthful and accurate are these reports? How worrying is this variant? Joining me to answer those critical questions and incidentally speaking to us from Heathrow Airport in London is Professor of Clinical Microbiology at the Cambridge Institute for Therapeutic Immunology and Infectious Diseases, Professor Ravindra Gupta. Professor Gupta, thank you very much for making time for us when you're just about to catch a plane. I want to talk to you about the new variant of COVID-19 discovered in South Africa called B.1.1.529. The BBC says it's been called horrific by one scientist and the worst one yet by another scientist. I'll come to details in a moment's time, but let me first ask you, are those descriptions in your opinion accurate? Well, I, I think that the scientific community has uh, had significant concern uh, over this new variant because, of course, we're used to seeing uh, variants arise, um, and usually they have maybe up to 10 new mutations compared to some of the older viruses. But this one has something like 50, and, it, and 30 of them are in the critical part of the, the protein, uh, the spike protein, which is interacting with our host cells and is the main target of neutralizing antibodies. So this is a really critical part of the, pro uh, the, the virus, and we're seeing multiple mutations in it, which means that we have to um, assume that this virus has escape properties as well as uh, higher infectivity until proven otherwise because of what we know about these mutations. Let me pick up on that particular point you made about the mutations. Apparently, Professor De Oliveira, the director of the Center for Epidemic Response and Innovation in South Africa, has told the BBC that this variant, as you said, has 50 mutations overall, 30 of which are in the spike protein. And for the sake of the audience, I'll explain the spike protein is the area most vaccines target, and it's also the route the virus takes to enter the body. Is that the reason why you believe that potentially this particular variant could be more immune escape than any other? In other words, it could defy the efficacy of vaccines, because vaccines, I believe, were all modeled on the Wuhan variant. Yes, well, so, so what the, the, the virus has signatures of having evolved within a person uh, uh, over a long period of time, maybe weeks, months. Uh, and what, what has been happening is the virus has been uh, counter, countering antibodies in the, uh, and, and, and cell-mediated immunity in the individual, and has been learning how to overcome those defenses and, and learning to become um, fitter and stronger as a virus. So that's what we think has happened. And the slight issue is that um, our vaccines are also designed against, uh, are designed against these particular regions and the virus has clearly um, found ways to get around immune defenses. So we, we should assume that this is going to impact, impact um, neutralizing antibodies. On the other hand, um, one good thing about the vaccines in India may be that of course, um, the, uh, the, we're using a lot of, they're using a lot of uh, the inactivated vaccine, which is a whole um, virus preparation. And so you, you'll have immune responses against different parts of the virus that may be less heavily mutated. Now that remains to be seen, but um, clearly we have to be worried about this virus because it could uh, reduce the efficacy of uh, vaccines even further than the Delta already has. Now the inactivated vaccine you refer to that is made in India is clearly co-vaccin done by Bharat Biotech. What about Covishield, which is the same as AstraZeneca in England? Would this South African variant be able to immune escape AstraZeneca, which we call Covishield? It's hard to tell. Of course, all, most, almost all vaccines at the moment are based around spike, not just the AstraZeneca, but also, of course, Pfizer and all the and Moderna, uh, of course, Johnson & Johnson as well. So all of these, all of these um, uh, vaccines are based around spike. It remains to be seen whether there is significant immune escape from those vaccines. Um, and, uh, but it's a hypothesis that needs testing in terms of whether whole virus preps may be um, uh, actually quite beneficial. Now, to go back to Professor Dolavera, who spoke to the BBC, he says that this variant has 10 further mutations 
in what's called the receptor binding domain compared to delta, which only has two. Would that make this particular variant more transmissible than even delta? Not necessarily, and I think that's uh, an this is important because we used to assume uh, that the receptor binding domain was the be all and end all about uh, uh, virus success, but we realized with delta that's not true because delta was an incredibly successful virus. It outcompeted all the viruses that had these receptor binding domain mutations. And it showed us that infectivity was actually a very key property of a virus in breaking through vaccines. So um, I wouldn't get too obsessed about the number of receptor binding domain mutations, more that there are many scattered throughout spike. And therefore, the, predict the predicted effect of, uh, is much more difficult to understand. Um, but I would, um, but based on what we learned from Delta, uh, infectivity advances or enhancements will be critical. So to sum up, your concern or your fear, if I can put it that strongly, is that this South African variant could be not just more transmissible than earlier variants, but also more resistant to the vaccines that exist. Essentially, yes. And that's why I think optimizing people's responses to vaccines, covering people with vaccines and getting very high levels, for example, through a third dose, is absolutely vital right now, because the higher the antibody levels are, the harder it is for any variant to overcome them. So this is another very critical point you're making. If this variant is, as you suspect, it's likely to be both more transmissible and more effective resisting vaccines, the need for a booster now becomes even more important. And I ask that because at the moment the Indian government believes, and this was said by the head of the Indian Council for Medical Research, Balram Bhargav, just a couple of days ago, that there is no scientific basis for the need for boosters. You're now saying, that this variant means that at least people over 60, those with comorbidities and perhaps frontline health workers should take boosters because otherwise their resistance could be low. Yes, that's absolutely right. Those risk groups should certainly be having boosters because there is ample scientific evidence that uh, uh, drop off of, of immunity does occur over time. And of course, the Delta variant has exacerbated that because it's partially resistant to va vaccines. So, so there, is a, there is a rationale of having boosters where they're available. Of course, it's all about vaccine access and equity. It's more important to vaccinate people with the first and second dose than it is to give people third. Of course, once you have vaccinated everybody with, with first two doses, the third dose then becomes important. Now, on the question of boosters, from your experience, for people who've had two jabs of COVID shield, which is what AstraZeneca is called in India, should the booster be Pfizer, which is what Britain has been doing, because I believe in Britain all boosters are Pfizer's, or would it be okay if the booster is a third jab of COVID shield? I think that some of the data shows that COVID shield combined with a, an mRNA vaccine such as Pfizer gives you a very nice response uh, and having different uh, vaccines is potentially useful. It may be that, that this could be something like COVID vaccine, you know, a different preparation. Um, uh, it remains to be seen. There's no data on that, but I think a third dose of anything will be beneficial regardless of what the vaccine is. I think that's very that. important. So, that's very important. A third dose of anything would be beneficial and important. Don't worry if it's not an mRNA vaccine. Now, I think so. according to Reuters, and I'm quoting them, the only bit of good news about this South African variant is that it can be detected by an RT-PCR test. If that's true and accurate, does it also mean that we don't need genome sequencing that, and therefore we can map the spread of this variant much more easily than others which did require genome sequencing? I mean, there is, there is some, some uh, truth in that statement. And um, it goes down to a deletion in the spike protein that we used to work on, in fact, and we have a, a, a nice paper on the mechanism. It's a deletion that enhances the infectiousness of the virus particle. And it was also seen in the alpha variant and a couple of other variants that have emerged. It's a recurrent um, signature in the virus. It's a good way of the virus increasing its infectiousness. It does lead to a partial dropout in one of the PCR um, assays that's used commercially. So um, in, an, in, in a period when you're having high levels of this new variant, it can be used as a surrogate marker. As I said before, we did use it last year for the alpha variant tracking. But of course, you need to know whether the, uh, you need to confirm on a regular basis whether those sequ those viruses are actually the one you're, we think it is, because of course alpha would look exactly the same on this test. Now, of so course, just, alpha's been outputted. 
just to confirm I've understood you correctly because I'm a layman, you're saying to me that this South African variant can be tested for by an RT-PCR test. It doesn't have to be necessarily genome sequencing, but it would be always wise to double check through genome sequencing as well. Yes, you would have to. In a summer in India where there is no documented infection with this variant, you would need to confirm that uh, in a thousand or a hundred cases that this this uh, positive signal was indeed the new variant and not another variant that carries the same mutation. Because as I said, that mutation does come up again and again in different variants. A last question, and I think in a sense it's opposite because I can see you're sitting in an airport lounge waiting to catch your plane and I don't want to hold you up for long. Britain has temporarily stopped all flights from South Africa, Botswana, and other neighboring African countries. Should India do something similar? Uh, that's up to the Indian government, but certainly curtailing the spread of this virus uh, for now is, is, is paramount. And therefore, any stringent measures that stop the virus traveling out of South Africa and the neighboring countries would be sensible for all other countries to take? Potentially, yes. Professor Gupta, thank you very much indeed. And I'm particularly grateful that you made time for us as you wait to catch a flight. Take care, stay safe, and bon voyage. Thank you. Bye-bye.